Friends, the first order of business as we now continue in our work is to report out on the lay and clergy ballot, ballot number one. And let me remind the House, as was shared earlier, that on this first ballot, that I will read all the names who had at least 10 votes. Okay? Okay, and part of our rules are that when your name is read, you may stand where you are. And also, as the names are read, you will see the names also appear on the screen, okay? And we will be reporting out on the clergy ballot first. Prepare for the report out. Dan Bryant, 294. Armando Ariano, 265. Okay, I, I want to make sure that I hear my brother and I see that he's in a scooter. Are you maybe not able to go to a mic? I need to understand what your question or point of order is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, friends, thank you for bringing that to my attention. There were 708 ballots cast. The number of ballot ballots was 659. The number needed for election was 330. Okay? Thank you. And thank you for helping me with that. So let me begin again. All right? Dan Bryant, 294. Armando Ariano, 265. Matthew Lafferty, 260. Clinton Quillen, 256. Michael Grant, 256. Abby Almond, 255. Gary Henderson, 249. Benita Rollins, 238. Kara Costello, 235. Andrew Call, 224. Scott Walsh, 216. Jonathan George, 209. Angela Lewis, 205. Jonathan Preby, 205. Steve Sullivan, 198. Karen Ohl, 190. Nestor Nazario, 181. Douglas Beggs, 180. Harley Wheeler, 178. Susan Brown, 164. Thomas Snyder, 144. Byron Bufkin, 133. Quincy Wheeler, One hundred and thirty-two, Aaron Porter, one hundred and three, Gary George, ninety-four, Gerald Ernst, eighty-four, Molly Brown, seventy-eight, Kelly Brown, sixty-six, Edward Fashball, sixty-one, David Rickers, fifty-eight, Luann Youngman, fifty-eight, Karen Edzak. 51, Andrew Scott, 49, David McDonald, 
43, Jacqueline Boyer, 39, Thomas Snyder, 31, Stephen Costello, 31, Edna Stahl, 30, Janet Zimmerman, 24, Edgar Brady, 22, Richard Wallace, 17, Darlene Robinson, 14, Todd Liberardi, 13, Dale Turner, 13, Paul White, 12, David Scavuzzo, 12, Cynthia Patterson, 11, Michael Baldwin, 11. Okay, there were 704 ballots cast. This is now for the laity, for the laity ballot. There were 704 ballots cast. Number of ballot ballots, 644. Number needed for election, 323. Martha Banks, 316. Bob Wagner, 268. Beulah Williams, 266. Richard Porter, 266. Irene Bevel, 254. Paul Sinicki, 243. Alan Lafferty, 238, Betty Wilson, 234, Clark Sprang, 231, Doris Brown, 223, Ellen Burroughs, 222, Kathy Palmer, 222, Sheila Harmon, 219, Thomas Lewis, 218, William Watts, 212, Jerry Reinhardt, 209. Bonnie Bliss, 203. Robert Catchpole, 189. Jason Niles, 181. Michael Hammond, 178. Sarah Dixon, 177. Roger Campbell, 172. Donald Laws. 164, Becky Weissenauer, 157, Pauline Daugherty, 147, Ray White, 130, Connor Pusher, 116, Richard Sammartino, 97, Amy Barr, 80, Donald Birdsall, 54, Lucinda Starr, 48, Susan Ockberger, 47, Cruz Damien, 46, Patricia Singlin, 46, Sam Shipley, 43, Suzanne Denham, 40, Tom Abraham, 39, Jonah Mitchell, 39, Sandy Merrick, 38, Holly Grant, 37, Olivia Bradley, 37, Brian Sheets, 37, Kathleen Barron, 37, Susan Dole, 35, Blair Porter, 33, Kenneth Phillips, 31, Jody Parrish Poland, 28, Lenora Jefferson, 27, Richard Sephora, 27, Kimberly Green, 22, Dorothy Reichenhausen, 19, Dawn Greigear, 19, Byron Rock, 18, Carol Nelson Burns, 17, Melody Barnes, 12, Marla Laney, 10, Vernon Brown, 10.
There are no elections. Friends, you did, did very well. We are ready to take ballot number two. Um, since there were no elections on either ballot, we will be voting for 12 on both the lay ballot and the clergy ballot. We will take the clergy ballot first. A reminder to only vote for folks within the range. Reminder to use your number two pencil and color your dot in clearly. Erase any um, stray marks on your ballot. Um, I think that's all the instructions I have. You did well on ballot one. That your ballot number for clergy ballot number two is 668. 668. You will vote for 12 persons, up to 12 persons, no more. Okay, it is our practice, I understand, that we put up a list when persons get elected. That's, that's our practice here in East Ohio. Clergy Teller Group B will be collecting the ballots. When you've completed your ballot, I ask that you stand so that Clergy Teller Group B can collect those and bring them to the front. Oh, you guys are so good. We do have somebody set to do to pray for us. Luigi Perez is at my flat. Luigi Perez will offer a prayer for us, and he's at microphone number one. Thanks for keeping us honest. Let us pray. Lord, as we continue to vote for the delegates who will represent East Ohio in the next general and jurisdictional conferences, we trust that your wisdom will guide us and your spirit will sustain us. Enable us to surrender our wills to yours. Awake us to see your love and presence leading us, because we want to be found good and faithful servants in our doing and being. We want to glorify your name and edify your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Luigi. Okay, um, let me recognize microphone number two. Microphone number two. James Rhodes, Mahoning Valley. I just had a question about the uh, disqualified ballots. Was there any insight into that? They were overvotes, uh, since there's no such thing as an undervote, or? We don't have clarity on that. We'll bring it for the next ballot. Thank you. They, they didn't give us a breakdown of what the invalid ballots were. Thank you for your question. Clergy, as you complete your ballots, we ask that you stand. Yeah, you do have to use a clergy ballot. So if by chance you did not get clergy ballots, um, you need to see Brenda to make sure you, that you have the right ones. The clergy ballots are larger than the lay ballots to accommodate the number of clergy in the conference who are eligible to receive votes. Lady, I'm going to encourage you that um, for you to start working on your ballots. You can start doing your work. The lights are as high as they go, they told me. If there is a question, you need to go to a mic. 
so that I can recognize you. I'm going to ask for the house to be still. The only movement should be the tellers. Whenever we're in the midst of a um, process of voting, let's keep the house as still as possible. Okay. Let me recognize microphone number six. Yeah, Tom Snodgrass, uh, High Valley District. Where does the number, so I don't get disqualified in my ballot, where does the number 668 go? Where it says ballot number or yes. anywhere on top? Ba they're in the ballot number. Okay, it's not ballot number two, and then you put 668 anywhere you want. No. Okay, the number goes where it says ballot number six. That's your six, code. Eight. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. Clergy, when you have completed your ballot, if you would please rise so that our tellers can come and receive those from you. I'm trying to get a sense of the house. I see a few cards being lifted. Let us give thanks to God for these tellers who are working on all of our behalf. <laughs> Getting a lot of steps in. Okay. If you need more time, if you'll wave your hand, I'm trying to get a sense of the house. Looks pretty good. Have all clergy ballots been received? If not, wave a hand. Okay, I see you. I see you. All right.
we are truly embodying the fruits of the Spirit. Patience is truly a virtue. Amen. And the love that we have for one another, being patient with each other. Okay, it looks like all ballots have been submitted. Oh, I see, okay, I see you back there. All right. Well, we have a moment. I want to apologize to the clergy because the size of the ballot has to be so large to accommodate the number of potential people we could vote for and the lightness of the color. We do understand that they're difficult to read. Um, the only way around it would be to go to a two-sided ballot that would mean we'd have to run it through the machine twice and it would take twice as long to get results. So I apologize for the difficulty in reading those. Um, Use your, use your phone light. Okay, friends, um, this is what we're going to do. I, I, I don't want the, um, the person that we're waiting for to feel hurried, so I'm gonna uh, allow for um, the teller to stay there to give the space needed to complete your ballot. So take your time and complete your ballot for the person uh, who we're waiting on. Um, I am going to um, proceed with the lady ballot, um, and I'm trusting that um, while the clergy were doing theirs, that you were working on yours. And so at this time, I am going to invite um, those of you who are completing or have completed your ballot, laity, if you would stand so they could be collected. Your laity, you are, man, you're testy already. <laughs> I didn't give them the number, so they're like, I lady. love it. You are voting for 12 persons. Your ballot code to write on the top of your ballot is 334. Just wonder where you're going to be on Thursday afternoon. <laughs> 334 is your ballot code. We prayed before the clergy ballot, it carried over. Right. Yeah, I had shared before that the persons who would be praying would be praying for both ballots when we're in that balloting process. So we're covered. Okay, I understand that the person that we were um, waiting for for the clergy ballot has completed it. So the clergy ballot for ballot number two is closed.
When you have completed your ballot, laity, you may stand. Again, let me remind the House that movement, we want to limit our movement except that of the tellers so we can get a feel for the House to know how we're coming along in the collection of the ballots. Let me recognize microphone number four. If the house can be still. Wesley Eddy, Firelands District. I'm, I'm sorry, we want to give you our total attention. If we can quiet the house. Thank you so much. Wesley Eddy, Firelands District. A question about the process. Okay. If through great discernment I've picked 12 people I'd like to vote for, and they didn't get enough votes, and I continue voting for the same 12 people, if we haven't eliminated anybody, I think we need to order more ballots because we'll never elect someone. <laughs> Thank you. That wasn't a question. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a pass on that one. Let's be patient, we're gonna get there, we're gonna get there. We will, we shall, we have to get there. 
Any other um, ballots that have not yet been collected? Okay, it looks like we are in good order. I am gonna close the ballot for the second ballot of the laity. Oh, I see one held up right here. We need a ballot collected over here. Okay. Friends, let me just share with you how appreciative I am of your patience. Um, this is, of course, my third annual conference with you, my first year with you um, as we're um, doing our e elections. And every annual conference does it so differently. And um, we've been patient with one another, and um, uh, we've been very generous toward one another. Let's keep that up. Amen? I think we're going to get into a rhythm, and we're getting there. Are we not? All right. Okay, let me recognize microphone number eight. Uh, yeah, Beth Farrell, Tuscross District. Uh, I have a suggestion on the, I know it may not be the way we've done it in the past, but um, there is no way you can record the numbers as you read them, it's too fast, even on the screen. So you don't know exactly what numbers are just, are not valid anymore. You're gonna have a lot of invalid ballots. So if there's some way that just a list of numbers that are no longer in play could be provided, it would be very helpful. Okay, I'm gonna receive that as a suggestion. Um, and of course, we're about to conclude for today. We'll make sure that that's um, discussed so we can better our process. Okay, Thank we're gonna receive that as a suggestion to, yes. to look into whether yeah. we can do that any differently or better. Okay? okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, let me just share, because we are at the hour where we are, and we're about to conclude in just a little bit, the report out on the second ballot will be tomorrow morning. Okay, we will not get a report tonight. You'll receive the report out on tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, at this time, let me um, call on Ivy Smith, our chair of program again, for some courtesies and announcements. Greetings. I am honored to present to you our bishop has allowed as a courtesy in the schedule for Reverend Dr. Jack Sullivan Jr. of the Ohio Council of Churches to come to us and present greetings. Thank you very much, Bishop Malone, dedicated staff and distinguished delegates. It is a pure joy for me to bring you greetings from the Ohio Council of Churches, particularly as you celebrate the life and ministry of your great conference and your wonderful communion. I am grateful for your spirited leadership in Ohio and for your visible and generous commitment to the ecumenical movement overall, and in particular, the Ohio Council of Churches. In political terms, Ohio is often referred to as a delegate-rich battleground state that can make or break one's presidential aspirations. Yet I call Ohio, my home state, a proving ground state for the ecumenical movement, for at this moment, it provides us with a stage on which we demonstrate the unifying, life-giving, systems-altering hope of our faith, and the platform through which we speak truth to power at the State House, as I did last week on the issue of gun violence, demanding that those who make decisions season their actions with the values that make for peace, for justice, and human dignity. At our century-old table, denominations come together for worship, study of critical issues, to give mutual support, and take social change actions that make visible the love justice ethic of our faith made known through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Liberator. Bishop, we all want to get people into heaven, yet we also want to get heaven into the people. 
in ways that emboldens, unites, and mobilizes them to live as agents of holy and divine change in their neighborhoods and across the state. As I take my seat, I will tell you, Bishop, it was my, my pleasure to have traveled through Mutari, Zimbabwe, the day the ground was broken for your great university there. And I felt good for United Methodists and for Christians everywhere as that ground was broken to see what God would do and is doing in that wonderful place. So I want to be among the very first to give you a donation for the fund for that university because I'm happy and proud of all of you for what you have done there. Thank you very much and may God continue to bless all of you. Amen. Thank you so much. We are so very thankful for the long-standing partnership um, that we here in East Ohio Annual Conference have with the Ohio Council of Churches. And I'm so very thankful um, to Jack Sullivan for coming to uh, bring greetings. And I want to thank um, the many churches and clergy and laity who are engaged in the social justice ministry um, of our beloved church, but also of our beloved ecumenical partnerships. Amen? Amen. Um, friends, I have the privilege of um, presenting something to you today, uh, presenting and acknowledging um, three persons among us who have received training in ecumenical and interfaith work. Um, the Council of Bishops um, provides training and resourcing and even fund an institute to train persons um, so they can go back to their respective communities, respective conferences, and to equip and train others. So I am going to move myself to the podium. And I am going to make a formal presentation on behalf of the Council of Bishops to acknowledge three persons who are members of this East Ohio Conference for the work and the training that they have completed so they could partner with us and equip and resource us in every good way to build and create partnerships, ecumenical partnerships, interfaith partnerships. And the three persons that I want to recognize on behalf of the Council of Bishops and we have certificates here for them. The first is Karen Graham. Amen. You'll come this way. I'm so very thankful to Reverend Karen. Um, she also serves on the board and oftentimes represents me when I cannot be at those meetings. Um, and so I want to thank you for your ministry among us and for representing and connecting the East Ohio Conference with the Ohio Council of Churches. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank Amen. You. We also want to acknowledge um, William Jones, who is our Director of Multicultural Vitality. Um, part of the portfolio and work of his work is to engage churches and equip churches and resource churches in creating and building partnerships and relationships, ecumenical and interfaith relationships. So William Jones. And Joy Parker, we want to recognize and acknowledge Joy Parker. If you would come, um, Joy is engaged in this work, um, particularly where most of your work um, is in the North Coast District. But of course, I know that you make yourself available um, to um, churches, clergy, and laity across the connection. But we want to acknowledge you taking the time to go and get training so you can be an equipper to help build bridges and help to create partnerships. So on behalf of the Council of Bishops, thank you. We believe within the Council of Bishops, and we're often reminded of this, that as a bishop of the church, we are all ecumenical officers. And we're also reminded, and I need to say this to all of our clergy, that as clergy and churches who are appointed not just to your church, but appointed to serve that community, 
you are also an ecumenical officer within your community. So I am so very thankful that we have persons among us who have received formal training to be able to resource and equip us to do and to build and to grow our capacity to do ecumenical and interfaith work. Amen? And it's all good for the kingdom. Amen. So let me share with you where we are. We have concluded our business for today, and we ought to be very proud of ourselves. We are on time, amen? Okay, we are gonna have a prayer to um, close us, and there's an announcement. Okay, let me call on Ivy. She has an announcement, a prayer request. And then Glenn Hamilton is going to come and close us in prayer. An announcement is registration for the Mission 5K Mile Walk is happening today and tomorrow outside of Hoover. And it is celebrating 200 years of ministry. This ministry is the arm of the church. This was... 200 years of people crossing this finish line, and Wednesday, they will receive a clementine and a lakeside donut. Come, that's an incentive, huh? Come and be a part of this run or walk celebration and sign up today or tomorrow. The 5K run one mile walk happens on Wednesday at 7 a.m. Now, if we would turn our attention to prayer. As Glenn is coming to pray, and I know you have a prayer request that you want to offer, let me remind the house that the ordination, I'm sorry, the retirement celebration is at 7.30 p.m. Okay, this is a part of our work together, part of our meeting. So after the prayer, we're going to be in recess until the celebration of retirement. Let us plan to return to honor those who have given their lives in full service to this beloved church. Amen? Amen. 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 We would like to keep in prayer Reverend Sue Chowdley. Uh, she is pastor of Jeromesville UMC. She was just released from the hospital today and her health has prohibited her from being here with us this week. Wanted to lift up prayers for Chris family from Niles, which suffered a devastating house fire on Memorial Day. The father and a 15-year-old son perished in the fire. Mother is to be released from UPMC burn unit today. 17-year-old son is still a patient at Nationwide Hospital in Columbus. Want to lift up in prayer that licensed pastors are reminded of the gift of the Spirit, even though they are not able to vote on issues for delegates, their prayers are just as important to the decisions being made by voters. Reverend Hamilton. Let us pray. Loving God, you yourself have given us your spirit to testify with ours that we are your children. And we are not only your children, but we are also heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. We have heard of those who even now have offered up their requests because they are suffering. We pray for them, asking that you will comfort encourage and strengthen. 
there are many others who are suffering and many, maybe even most of us, feel some pain. Remind us that the sufferings that we endure, individually and as a whole United Methodist Church, are your sufferings. And God, remind us that the most important thing is not our division, but our mission. And it's not what we see that matters, but it is what you see, and it is your vision that matters, and we must follow you. So God, as we continue to strive to be together and to love one another, that through us you would do your work, your way, through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen.